now in the middle of a countrywide strike by academic staff in universities. And it's all because of an ongoing row over the potential changes to these staff's pension scheme, which is officially known as the University Superannuation Scheme, the USS. It all started from last July, when it was discovered that the whole scheme had racked up a £17.5 billion deficit, as estimated through conventional accounting methods. And as a result, the Joint Negotiation Committee of the USS try to come up with reforms for the system. Now this committee itself is composed of members from two bodies. One is the UUK, the Universities UK, which represents the university employers. And the other is the UCU, the University and College Union, which represents the academic employees. Both sides had tabled their own proposals for the reforms. It was the UUK's actual reform that was adopted in the vote by the committee as a whole. It should be noted that this decision was made only through the tiebreaker vote of the committee's independent chairman. Now, if the proposal is actually implemented, it would mean that all employees who are now currently on the defined benefit scheme will be moved to the defined contribution scheme. Now, what that all means is that instead of receiving a fixed income after retirement, all employees will now have to make a small contribution from their salaries to make investments into the stock market. And of course, that means that the ultimate size of the pension that they get will depend on the performance of these stock markets. From this point on, not much progress had been made. The UUK maintained that their proposal is a sustainable solution for reducing the deficit. However, the UCU insisted that their members would be left worse off from these changes. A typical lecturer, they estimated, would stand to lose £200,000 from their pension. And so by January, the UCU called for a vote to decide whether they should strike in the event that last-minute negotiations were to fail. Of all the members who voted, 88% said yes. And with nothing much coming out of the negotiations in the end, the strikes went ahead, and here we are today. The current plans of the UCU is to strike for a total of 14 days across four weeks, between February and March. During this period, 61 universities and an estimated 1 million students will be affected. Apart from walking out, academic staffs will also be conducting other actions, such as not covering for sick colleagues, as well as refusing to reschedule classes that's been missed because of the strikes. All staff who are striking will not be paid by the university on these striking days. The student reaction to these strikes have generally been positive. On a general level, the National Union of Students, and more locally, the Student Union of Sussex University, have already voiced their support for the strikes. But there have also been complaints as well. In particular, students are very worried about the strike's impact on teaching and assessment. They're also annoyed that they're missing out on contact hours, which they've already paid quite a lot for through the tuition fees. And as a result, some are calling for universities to reimburse the students based on these missed contact hours. Others have petitioned for the setup of hardship funds that are funded through the docked pay of striking workers. Now, doubtless, this will put a degree of pressure onto the university leadership. But now some are also unhappy that students are being used as leverage effectively. This has been the background so far for the story, and we shall see how things will develop over the coming weeks. This has been Mike Coe of News Hit for UNITV.